So that was the 2008 Central Pacific Regional Championships where I competed at the Novice Ladies event and it was such an exhilarating experience for me and I was so happy that I was out there on the ice and I was able to put out my best performance um, when it was needed the most and I ended up being champion that year which was such an exhilarating feeling because at the beginning of the season I injured myself so I didn't even know if I was going to compete that, that year at all. It was you know, detrimental for me to go through my first injury. I actually broke my growth plate in my you know, landing foot. I was doing double axles and I tweaked it really hard and I snapped it. it I heard it. And it was really bad. I was off for three to four months. It was super crazy because it was the beginning of the season and I knew my competitors were already getting their program set and I was still sitting here with the boot on so I didn't think that I was going to have a chance at all to even go to Utah to compete at regionals. But for me to be able to prove myself wrong, to prove that you know I could recover, I could do it if I put my mind and heart into it, it was such a rewarding experience for me. With that being said, you know, competitions are already hard in itself. The nerves are there, the pressure's on, you're the only one out there on the ice while you're trying to prove yourself that you're, you know, good enough to compete at a certain level in front of judges, skaters, audience members, your parents, your coach. It's super intense. So for me, I just wanted to be able to share a few of my tips that helped me get to where I wanted to go in terms of having my own skating goals. In terms of training, that's the first thing I want to address. I would train at 4 a.m. So I wake up at 4 a.m. actually. And then I would try to go to the gym around 5 o'clock so I could warm up before I had my morning practice for one hour and then I would do a double run through with my program so I would dedicate my morning to either my short my long and then the afternoon would be the alternative of the one that I chose so if I wanted to do my short in the morning I would focus on my short and I would do a double run through so I would do my program with the music and then right after do the program without the music and if I knew that I was competing in an area of high altitude, whether it be Utah, Colorado, or Jackson Hole, Wyoming, which is where I competed one time uh, for sectionals, and that was a crazy high altitude experience, just to say the least. But um, I was able to practice with my mask beforehand, so if I practiced with my mask, it would you know, heighten the intensity of my lung capacity, and obviously after I did my program, I would be like breathing so heavily, like, oh, <laughs> it actually worked because when I actually um, skated in Utah or Colorado, it didn't feel as bad as it should have. Like, I did that to increase my endurance, so that helped a lot. And then I would go to school, and then after school, I would skate for another hour or two, and I would do my long double run through. So the day of the competition, I would have a light breakfast. I would have a yogurt, string cheese, and some fruit. I would always want to keep my stomach a little bit more on the emptier side because I knew that when I was competing that day, I don't want to be super heavy and I couldn't move my body. Or, you know, if I got to the ring for the competition, I didn't want to regurgitate the food that I ate that day. So I wanted to keep it more on the lighter side. And I would also have an hour practice before the competition because I wanted to get my feet underneath me on the ice and feel good about my jumps and my spins so I feel more confident that day. And then if, you know, sometimes you don't have a great practice and you fall on your jump over and over again, but then you have to think to yourself like, oh, great, the bad practice is now out the window. Now I'm going to have a great performance. Sometimes I just had to lie to myself to get through things, but most of the time I was able to feel good that day because the adrenaline is pumping and the pressure's on. So that kind of lit a fire under my butt so then I could get to it. I tried my best to be positive throughout the whole competition day because you know, sometimes you're thinking just negative thoughts to yourself, but being positive and happy is one of the things that can bring out the best in your skating performances. I would arrive to the rink an hour beforehand and I would be in my workout clothes because when I warmed up I wanted to be able to move freely and sometimes your dresses are really constricting. Mine were like perfectly snug and my arms sometimes couldn't lift up. But when I wore workout clothes, I was a lot more free and I could break a sweat. I always like to break a sweat so that my nerves would be out of my system and the butterflies would just go out of my stomach because you know now I was like sweating and I was like more intense um, and after I sweat I felt a lot better. And then I would cool off in the ring and then put my skating dress on. 
one of the things that helped me was honey. I would go to Starbucks beforehand and get like three packages of honey and I would rip them and then I would have like one before the warm up and then like two right before my competition because that gave me an instant boost of natural sugar. It might be a placebo effect but at the same time I think it did help because I didn't eat that much that day so I wanted something that would you know boost my energy instantly without giving me a sugar rush. But yeah, I always had a great time competing. It was so fun to be in front of an audience and have them, you know, support you or clap for you when you land or jump and like still clap for you if you fall because they're trying to, you know, push you through your program. But competing was always a fun thing for me, but it's not necessarily fun all the time. You know, if the nerves are there, it's going to be tough to push through them. But if you have a specific regimen, if you have a routine that will help you throughout your competition season, then the competitions will be a lot more fun and fluid. So I hope these tips help because when I was skating, I always wondered how other individual skaters prepare for competitions, but since it's such an individualized sport, everybody's in their own zone, doing their own thing, nobody's sharing any secrets at all, um, but I think this would be great for anyone who's always wondered what other people did for their competition prep, and I hope it inspires you to be the best that you can be, create your own skating regimen, do what's best for you, come up with something that works, and stick with it. You're going to do great at your competitions and I hope these tips help and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks. Bye.